Well, welcome to the Post Sunday app. We're glad you've joined us today. My name is Ben Davidson. I'm the associate pastor here. This is Daniel Bennett. He's our teaching pastor and uh, preacher of First Samuel 30. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> like that's a new. Okay. That's new news. Yeah, that's that's fine, that's I'll just add it to the business card. Yeah. <laughs> and, and preacher, preacher of First Samuel 30. 30. Yesterday. Yes, yes. Well, no one else preached it yesterday no. at Bethany. At Bethany. Church. Somebody Front did. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in my app. Um, but the purpose there of... There aren't a lot of sermons on First Samuel. I've, you know, kind of, sometimes yeah. you're in a passage, you're like, I wonder how other people have handled this. And For sure. Not a lot of people have handled yeah. preaching through First Samuel. Well, and, and, you know, you could read First Samuel and think, what am I to glean from this? And to see how you made it so practical mm. was just very, very helpful. Yeah. So it's yeah. testimony to God's grace to mm. you and yeah. to us that he would make his word so yeah. relevant so, to us. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, so we hope that this Post Sunday app does um, allow us to take questions and give you the mulligan, as we always say. Yeah. Um, so, but before we get into 1 Samuel 30. Oh, right. We have a question that came in from last Sunday's sermon on 1 Samuel 28, right? Mm -hmm. 28. Yeah. Um, the question was uh, related to how should we think about, um, a, 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 I think it was a, a specific uh, book or, or movie where a young boy died, um, presumably went to heaven, mm -hmm. and then came back yeah. to life. Yeah. And the question was based on how... Um, in First Samuel twenty eight, right, there was an ascent. What seemed like a coming out of mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. coming back and talking and that type of thing. So um, maybe maybe there's a couple of questions to think through here. Maybe, maybe you want to review what happened in First Samuel twenty eight okay. just briefly, yeah. and then maybe address this this specific question about is yeah. how should we process this this young boy's situation? Yeah. So there's a, there's an extraordinary event in First Samuel twenty eight. Well, even before that, God's clearly laid out in his word that you're not to uh, try to speak with the dead. That's, you know, don't don't mess with that world. Don't pray to angels, demons, all that sort of stuff. So, um, in 1 Samuel 28, Saul disobeys that, and for some reason, God allows Samuel to talk to uh, Saul, and Saul simply basically repeat or Samuel just repeats to Saul what God had already revealed to him. Mm -hmm. So the, the question about these, uh, some people call them heaven tourism books. You know, like okay. you're, you go to heaven yeah. and you look around and you come back. Okay. There's like, um, uh, 90 minutes in heaven by Piper, but not John Piper, Don Piper. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was really big whenever I was, uh, in, I think I was in college working at a Christian bookstore and it was number one on the mm. Christian bookseller list. Um, 20 minutes in hell or something. Um, heaven is for real Z's or <laughs> heaven is for real or something, or the boy who died went to heaven and came back or, you know, and so, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mess, I wouldn't waste time with those books. Mm. Um, I think they're for several reasons. One, um, they, they clearly, at points contradict what scriptures told us about heaven. And so they are, um, you know, they're, they're not true. Mm -hmm. One of the books uh, by, um, I think it was the boy who, who died and went to heaven and came back some title, but he recanted. He said that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And his name was Malarkey. I mean, so I don't, I don't know. Like I'm not, like there's a lot of really good people with the last name Malarkey, but if you're reading a book that you're a little skeptical about, oh, who's the author? Malarkey. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. It seems. But what, but what would you say to someone who say, you know, I, I read that and I, I I I got hope from from reading that. Yeah. How would you respond? I would say you right. don't you don't need to get hope from that. Mm. There's right? a better source. There's a better source. I mean, yeah. uh, let's say that it's all 100 percent true. Uh, you don't need it. Uh, mm. Scripture is sufficient. It's you know First Peter uh, or Second Peter one. It's 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 uh, it's sufficient for all that we need. It, it, God, God has given to us mm. all that we need for for life and godliness. Or that's mm. Second Timothy three. So um, I would um, I would encourage a person not to waste time with them. So yeah. So they 
that contradict scripture in terms of how they describe it. Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, whenever he is, is taken and has this heavenly vision, he says he was told not to talk about it. Mm. Um, John uh, says, you know, there's some things I heard and the angel, you know, don't write them down. So there's, there's still a barrier and God's revealed everything we need to know about heaven at this point in his word to, to have hope. But Paul says in sec, in um, uh, first Thessalonians, uh, therefore encourage one another with these words. And so we, we have what we need is what yeah. I would tell a person. Yeah. And, and do you think, and tell me if I'm being too strong here. I, I think um, some would say, you know, that this boy had insights that how would a boy this age have these types of insights, you know, or these types of things. And I, I think sometimes the, the enemy wants to um, try to give some credence, some yeah. reliability sure. to the, to the vision or whatever it is, just to um, to keep us distracted. Yeah, I think from from what our, our mission is, to go and to make disciples. Yeah, you know? yeah. And in one of the books, yeah, I think that's exactly right. There's there's the demonic world too. It, it, Satan can disi- disguise himself as an angel of light. Um, and and the the things that the one of the boys said, you know, I saw Jesus wearing a, a white robe with a purple sash. Really. I mean, like, where did you see that? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, without ascribing motives to every, we don't know the situations of all the people who wrote these different books, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. except for the one person who's come back and said this is what happened. Um, yeah. It, it, it's very possible that ideas are implanted in a kid's head, and a parent extrapolates. We, we've we've seen that in yeah. our own parenting, where yeah, our, our memories are tainted by what questions we ask or our kids ask anyway yeah I, I do correct all my children's memories of how much a, a, a bad father I yeah was. like oh, that didn't happen you're misremembering that, that clearly did not happen right <laughs> so yeah okay well should we move on to this yeah, week's let's, sermon let's do this then? Week. okay uh question came in related to types mm-hmm. and so maybe define what a type is yeah, and then the question was, can we go too far? I think sometimes when we look for types. Yeah, a type is like a, a pattern or event that happens in the Old Testament that points us to a, a greater event or a person in the New Testament. Uh, so, a, a type has correspondence, like there's some sort of thing that which they, they correspond, and then the 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 thing in the New Testament is greater. So, mm-hmm. uh, the the manna in the Old Testament, the Bible tells us Jesus says, you know, I'm the I'm the living bread, you know, so it's, there's, there's a similarity, both the manna and Jesus provide nourishment. There's a, a point of correspondence, but the, but Jesus is greater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the type points us and it, and it pointed the people in the old Testament to the, the coming, uh, new covenant, mm-hmm. specifically mm-hmm. Jesus. Okay. Often. So as you read the old Testament, it's very tempting probably to go. Type 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 type, 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 type. That's that's about yeah. Jesus. That that reminds yeah. me of Jesus. Yeah. So how how do we caution ourselves on that? Yeah. There's you know there's longer articles that I could encourage people to mm-hmm. to look at. Um, there's a uh, a chapter in the book The Mystery of Christ by Rena Hand that, that talks about types. But but gen- just generally, I say well, does does Scripture point us in that direction? So like with David, uh, Jesus is called the Son of David. He's uh, he, he's there's just so many elements of this this theme of kingship that are, are taking place in the Old Testament, pointing us to a future king. And so, as as, as uh, the the narrator in the book of First and Second Samuel points us to this this coming Messiah, mm. he's the Anointed One. And so, what what I think you want to do is say, okay, is there is there textual evidence and, and biblical evidence that, that points me in that direction, or am I Am I reading more in the story that mm-hmm. that, that is here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and looking what uh, what what other um, yeah. fellow believers before us yeah. look yeah. at it too. I think it's helpful too, right? Yeah, absolutely. If I'm the first person to ever find this type, yeah. <laughs> there's probably yeah. probably an issue there. Yeah, and and, and yeah. so a lot of times the New Testament will say this is a type, and so we okay, yep, good to go. Yep. You know the. Just as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so will the Son of Man be lifted up. Okay, mm-hmm. correspondence. Yeah. The text is telling me. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's that's what we're looking for okay. as well. Okay. Very good. Um, this wasn't a question that came in, but I think it was something you just wanted to re- yeah. reference that um, yeah. the people that stayed behind in First Samuel thirty. Yeah. The, the people that others did not want to give. Yeah. Toward. Right. Yeah. Or have them let, let them have a share of what was right. collected back. Right. The, the people who stayed with the baggage. 
there's just something else that I wanted to encourage people with in that. And, and I was like, okay, this just really isn't the time. Uh, I don't have the time for this. But the people who stay with the baggage, I think another aspect of David's graciousness in that chapter is realizing what people were capable of. Mm. And I think about this a lot in the context of parenting. A lot of times as parents, we want, we expect more of our children than they're capable of doing. Mm. And so part of graciousness is just as, as we disciple in particular, is looking at a person and saying, okay, this is where maybe they need to be, but right now they're here. And so I'm not going to expect them to be here. Mm. And uh, I think especially with, with uh, younger children, we can sometimes be, sometimes be frustrated where they are in their development mm. and not recognizing, oh, I just need to be gracious. Yeah. Let them stay with the baggage. Yeah. And David, I think, has a lot of wisdom there. Mm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'm thinking of, um, yeah, just especially when you see a going to the parenting route here yeah. just for a second, when you see your child heading towards something that you did when you were their yeah. age yeah. and you want to protect them right. from that, but recognizing right. like, Hey, sometimes they have to go through hard. Yeah. Like I had to go through hard. And, yeah. Yeah. But that's good. That's good. Well, the last thing you wanted to touch on was the idea of being gracious um, mm -hmm. versus being nice. Yeah. And is, is there a difference yeah. between the two? I think there is. Some people struggle with, with, niceness like they're not very nice people and so they struggle with graciousness or they're very you know mm. they're truth telling you know, i'm gonna tell like it is and mm. um that's not my struggle like my struggle sometimes i tell myself i'm being gracious when i'm really just trying to be like a worldly nice mm. so i think and i mentioned the, the idea of being polite yesterday graciousness isn't just politeness now you don't want to be impolite you don't want to be a rude person you don't want to be not nice but sometimes we think, well, I want to be nice and gracious, and so I'm not going to talk with someone I love about sin. I'm not going to confront them. Mm. And so I think we're all going to struggle in different ways. And if I'd had more time, I might have kind of delved into this a little bit more. A lot of us need to be more gracious. Um, you know, there's just a real lack of graciousness sometimes. But sometimes uh, some of us need to be uh, graciously confrontational in some areas mm. where we love people. Yeah, and that's where I would, if I was giving the sermon to just me, I would have spent some more time on that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really good to think about. Yeah. Yeah, think about. So, all right. Well, anything else you wanted to no, talk I'm, about I'm good. today? Okay. Well, we should say you you did announce before the sermon the the name of the church sure. replant. Yeah, that it's a officially covenant community church. Yeah, is what we're looking at uh, for that replant in the Rome Chillicothe area. So we're grateful for. Yeah that work and things are plugging along there huh? yeah Sunday school class is meeting currently on site here at Dutch Lane and a lot of renovations being done at yeah. the building so excited for it so all right thank you Daniel yeah, thanks thanks for tuning in to the post Sunday app have a great rest of your day